Hey everyone, it's Farrah Prudence here. Um, I tried going live yesterday twice on Facebook and the live feed got cut off. So this is my third attempt to talk to you about something that is so very important. Uh, yesterday I found this video um, with Patrick Kolbeck who's running for the governor's seat in Michigan this year, uh, as well as Dr. Abdul Sayed who's also running for governor of Michigan this year. Um, if Dr. Sayed wins, he will be the first Muslim uh, to have a governor's seat in the United States of America. And um, at this meeting, Mr. Kolbeck talks about his concerns that he has about Dr. Sayed's affiliations with the Muslim Brotherhood through his family, through his education, um, through different connections, as well as his wife. And um, of course, he's talking about care, um, Isna, a lot of the people that have a lot to do with the making of Dr. Sayed. And here's an opportunity for Dr. Sayed to represent the moderate, loving Islam that he loves to talk about. Of course, Dr. Sayed is Sharia compliant. He has very strong bonds with the Muslim Brotherhoods, um, with the Muslim Brotherhood through CARE and ISNA and all these organizations. As Mr. Kolbeck actually pointed out, the Muslim Brotherhood is a terrorist organization. They are labeled a terrorist organization. They are banned in several Muslim countries to include the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, uh, as well as Egypt, which is, of course, where the Muslim Brotherhood originated from in the 1920s. Now, um, if you'd like the history on the Muslim Brotherhood, please go ahead and Google them. There are several documents uh, that link them to terrorism. There are several of their own self-professed acts and, and terrorist activities that they have um, taken part in. But but that's not the, the point. The point is that Patrick Kolbeck was talking about he's not a racist. It's not about religion. It is about political ambition. It's about terrorism. It is what is called cultural jihad, which is he, which he is completely 100% correct on. It is an actual thing. It does exist. It's not a conspiracy theory. And instead of Dr. Sayed coming out and talking and saying, hey, guess what? I know that there are little girls um, who had female genital mutilation performed on them here in the state of Michigan, and that concerns me, and I'm going to go after the people that practice that. I know that there has been honor violence carried here in Michigan, and I am concerned about that too. I know that there have been honor killings taking part here in the state of Michigan. I am concerned about that too. I know that there are underage marriages taking part here in the mosques of Michigan. I'm concerned about that too. I want to go after that too. Thank you for bringing up these concerns, Mr. Kolbeck. That's not how it went down. Uh, instead of taking that path, um, instead of being what people hoped he would be, the moderate, loving Muslim like people like to label him, he actually took the Sharia path and the Jihad path of accusing Mr. Kolbeck of being a racist, of Islamophobia. Um, and then he turned to the entire Republican Party saying that they have not done enough to denounce this kind of behavior. But not only that, at the end, he, he turns around, he says to Mr. Kolbeck, he says, you might not hate Muslims, but they hate you. And isn't that the problem? Isn't that what myself and other ex-Muslims have been talking about? Listen, regardless of, of what an ex-Muslim becomes, whether it's an atheist, a Christian, a Jew, we come in all kinds of flavors and colors and sizes and shapes um, after leaving Islam. We're all saying the exact same thing. Islam hates the West. We don't at the West need to hate Islam for Islam to hate us. Sharia compliant Muslims, such as Dr. Abdul Sayyid, have no loyalty to the Constitution. They have no loyalty to the United States. Their only loyalty is to Sharia. That's why when questioned about Sharia, when questioned about how he would go about addressing these issues in Michigan, when told that there are concerns about this, he went on the offensive and he spoke some truth in saying that Muslims hate Patrick Kolbeck. Now I want to talk to the Christians in Michigan. You better put your listening ears on. If you don't show up and vote any other way but Kolbeck, or any other way, I'm sorry, than um, Dr. Sayed, you're going to end up being the first dimmy state in the United States.
Did you hear me? Let me repeat that. If you do not show up and go vote, you are gonna end up closing down your churches, getting out of your neighborhoods, and you're gonna be a dimmy states. Go Google it, it's D-H-I-M-M-I. -M -M Find out what a dimmy means. This is cultural jihad. This is civilization jihad right there for you to see and for you to hear. And if you don't do something about it, I believe that Michigan is, become the can is gonna become the cancer state that spreads to the rest of the United States. And this is why I am fighting for Michigan. Now, a lot of people are gonna call me a hate monger. And here's what I wanna address or a fear monger. I do not hate Muslims. My heart breaks for them and I love them. This is why I go out and I speak. This is why I'm against little Muslim girls getting their genitals mutilated. This is why I'm against little Muslim girls getting forced to marry men. This is why I'm against little Muslim girls and women and even boys and men getting beaten through honor violence and getting killed, getting shipped abroad to be married off in these loveless marriages that are they did not consent to. I am for them. I am for Muslim rights. I'm not asking you to be afraid because I'm not afraid of a thing. I'm not afraid at all because I know where I stand. I know what I'm willing to fight for. And let me tell you something. If you believe in something and you're not willing to stand for it, then it's not a principle. It's an opinion. And it's time for the people of Michigan and for the people of America to stop having an opinion and start having principles and start standing up and not be worried about people calling you names. Names don't hurt me and they won't hurt you. But guess what will hurt? And I'm talking specifically to Christians right now. When Jesus comes back and he said, what did you do to stand up for people? What did you do? Did you just sit there and pray and wait for me to come back and do something? Or did you get up and use your gift and your talent and whatever God gave you to help those who are standing up, to stand up yourself? Do you want your daughters to have to wear a hijab at school in five or 10 years? Because that's coming, baby. Do you want your daughters and your sons to go to separate classrooms during Ramadan, which by the way is coming May 15th, so they can eat while Muslims fast? Guess what? There are countries that were much mightier, much stronger, much more Christian than America is. And they fell to Islam. And now that's what they do. So ask yourself this. What are you willing to sacrifice on the altar of acceptance? What are you willing to sacrifice on the altar of tolerance to hate? Because that's what Sharia is. Sharia is hate. And Dr. Sayyid said it himself. You don't have to, you may not hate Muslims. Muslims hate you. You know why? Because they're Sharia compliant. And Sharia is Allah's laws. And Allah is hate. Allah is not love. We don't worship the same God. So here's what I want you to do if you're listening right now. Please. Don't take my word for it. Please go and do your own research. Find out how the Roman Empire really fell. Find out how the English Empire fell, the British Empire. Find about Islam and how they took over Spain and how they reached China, how they took over the entire Arabian Peninsula, went into the Middle East, North Africa. Do you think it was with missionary work? No, it was with jihad, whether it was civilization jihad or it was cultural jihad or it was jihad by the sword. As a matter of fact, Muhammad himself was a refugee who seeked asylum in Medina from Mecca for his supposed abuse that he received in Mecca. Once he had the numbers and the armies, that's when he started to exterminate the Jewish villages that were around him. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. So first of all, educate yourself, educate those around you, share this video. Don't be afraid of being called names. That's okay. 
Some of the greatest people in the world were called very, very nasty names. Then I want you to find out what your gift is, what your talent is, and use it to help us, please. Whether you are good on social media, you're internet savvy, maybe, um, maybe you're a good talker, maybe you're a good writer, maybe you're good at sharing things. Whatever your gift is, please share it with us. Hey, if you don't want to do anything, you want to send us financial support, please do so. We have a lot of costs to cover. We have links all over our Facebook accounts. I'm not in this fight alone. There's a lot of people in this fight with me. Stand up, say something, do something. And make sure that we never stoop to their level. That we always use our morals and our American beliefs and our American principles that are based on Judeo-Christian principles to deal with people because hate cannot overcome hate. Only love can overcome hate. And loving someone means telling them the truth. I'm going to be in Michigan June 15th and 16th. There are some other dates. If you know of a venue in Michigan that will see me and let me speak, please let me know. I will be there. I will do my best to be there. Again, this is Fair Prudence. Don't forget to share this feed um, and send me any questions that you have. About to look at the comments over here. Hi, Alan. Thank you. Uh, Mark, thank you very much. Thank you, Sonia. God bless you as well. Kumar. Yes. Demi. It's a real word. Hey, Rufus and Sandra. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for leaving your comments. Please share this video and um, I'll be back with you soon. Oh, and uh, let's keep our eyes on what's going on in Paris with this new stabbing. God help us all, especially Europe.